Welcome all. Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, about another method on geophysical investigation. So this lecture will be lecture 11 under this course and under uh, module 3 that is geophysical investigation this is th uh, third kind of investigation we will be discussing. So, so far under module 3 we have discussed like what are the um, uh, I mean I had given an introduction about geophysical methods why geophysical methods are important because of non-destructive nature uh, considering most of the methods here then uh, the ability of the methods to penetrate deeper depth for investigation then uh, um, even larger area you can uh, you can go for investigation without much interpolation in between the testing locations and uh, uh, particularly for quality control third one uh, uh, whenever we are interested to go for any kind of forensic investigation we can go for geophysical methods because those are non destructive methods it will be very easy uh, in comparison to uh, geotechnical method performing geo uh, physical methods will be relatively easier to conduct at the sites which are under uh, which are undergoing any kind of distress or failure or uh, showing any other indication of uh, 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 which is lacking for serviceability criteria. Then we discuss about seismic reflection survey like uh, how uh, under seismic reflection survey we discuss like uh, what can be the potential sources which can cause uh, which can uh, induce shocks or shock vibrations in the way uh, in the medium once the wave passes through the medium it will offer uh, depending upon the kind of wave it will offer some kind of maybe compression or it may be inducing shear and depending upon the resistance offered by the material to those kinds of wave or uh, the motion uh, in the particles because of the propagation of those waves we will be able to distinguish between different materials considering their resistance offered by the material. So, there, this method can be used particularly for uh, uh, very deep geophysical investigations like for oil exploration, mineral exploration and all that. Uh, uh, then we, we started with seismic refraction survey. I mentioned last time like uh, uh, whenever shock wave starts from the source it, it will be uh, 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 depending upon the angle of incidence there will be wide range of angle of incidence because of uh, uh, wave fronts uh, that will give you better indication. So, there will be some refraction which is happening quite uh, uh, away from the normal there will be refraction which is happening at lesser inclination with respect to the normal depending upon the ratio of physical property to uh, physical properties like VP1 and VP2 ratio and the angle of incidence of uh, reflection uh, uh, in, in incident wave. Then uh, uh, the incident wave which are uh, falling at critical angle so, the refraction for those cases will be happening along the interface that is mostly at 90 degree you can consider as angle of refraction. So, for, uh, further so because after refraction the waves are traveling through stiffer medium. So, the time required for the wave to propagate in the stiffer medium will be significantly lesser in comparison to the wave which are traveling in relatively softer medium that is how we will be able to interpret the based on the time of arrival of reflected wave from deeper depths what what kind of lithology is available what are the thickness and what are other uh, um, properties of subsurface medium it, it will be very difficult to interpret based on single geophone so it is always desired to go for multiple geophones that is called as uh, maybe geophone arrays or seismic arrays or micro tremor studies also you can use so that you can you will be able to understand what kind of different lithology is available at a particular site of interest but I mentioned like a major disadvantage here is seismic refraction survey you cannot use when the shear wave uh, or primary wave velocity the medium uh, stiffness if it reduces with respect to the depth then the refraction will never reach to the geophone and because it is not reaching the time of arrival of refracted wave you cannot record and thus how you cannot do the uh, interpretation part. So, it will be only possible when the medium stiffness is increasing with the depth that you can use seismic refraction survey. So, uh, subsequently the refractions will be happening from uh, deeper layers will get detected by the geophones you can interpret. I also mentioned uh, depending upon the kind of source we are using for shock wave generation that will give you an idea whether the generated uh, shock waves will be dominated by primary waves or it will be dominated by shear waves. So, that your geophone is recording what kind of wave the, uh, you will get to know an idea about that. And, uh, uh, so, so, that is uh, all about uh, seismic method, but one important thing which I would like to highlight here like 
in geophysical method or any kind of subsurface investigation, our objective is to understand the subsurface medium by any ways considering its physical property or considering its resistance to any kind of external loading or disturbance. So, that disturbance or the resistance offered if it is matching with the uh, contrast in the physical properties of the medium as well, that will resolve our purpose because our objective is to identify by some means the, uh, the layer which are different from each other in terms of their physical properties. So, based on geophysical method, we try to quantify those characteristics of the material which are showing some indication of variation and is consistent with the physical properties of the medium. So, when we started with geophysical methods like seismic reflection survey, seismic refraction survey, we were trying to identify or we were trying to understand the variation in lithology with reference to the resistance offered to seismic waves, whether it can be primary wave, it can be uh, 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 shear waves or, or it can be uh, surface waves also. So, same way there are other methods which induce different other uh, uh, you, you can say like uh, uh, resistance offered uh, by the medium to different kind of disturbances or different kind of waves which are you are inducing. So, based on the resistance offered to those kind of external uh, disturbances, the, uh, you will be able to quantify the variation in the physical properties of the medium depending upon how much the resistance uh, the medium at different different layers are, are uh, offering to the disturbance. So, one among these is uh, uh, we, uh, we discussed about seismic method, now we will be discussing about electrical resistivity method. So, what electrical resistivity survey does like in seismic refraction I mentioned you are interested to find out first of all you generate shock waves and then the subsoil resistance offered against the passage of shock wave is, man, is, uh, is uh, interpreted or estimated based on multiple geophones and that is how you will be able to understand how much is the medium, uh, uh, you will be able to understand the medium characteristics against seismic wave which can be in terms of Young's modulus if it is primary wave, shear modulus if it is uh, secondary wave or shear waves. Similar way very much similar to this uh, in electrical resistivity survey what we, we are interested to find out, we are interested to find out the resistance offered by the subsurface medium against the resistance comes into picture, but this resistance will be different from the resistance which the material was offering to seismic wave. Here the material is offering resistance or the subsurface medium is offering resistance against electric current. So, we are inducing some way electric current into the subsoil medium and we are interested to find out how much the resistance different different layers it can be one lithology, one particular depth or along the depth uh, what kind of resistance medium at different different depths on and overall are offering against electric current. So, this is most important thing when you go for electrical resistivity survey we are interested uh, to quantify the physical properties of the medium, we are interested to identify the medium based on what kind of resistance the soil is offering against electric current. This electric current will not be there by default in the soil, so uh, generally by means of external source of uh, uh, current we are inducing those uh, 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 electric current into the soil. So, this is used in this survey in order to understand subsoil medium. So, remember in mind like our objective is to classify the soil and depending upon the choice of the method there are different ways you are able to quantify uh, or understand the soil type based on the resistance offered by the soil to any kind of disturbance or, or uh, uh, vibration or any other uh, features. So, the current is passed, how it goes the current is passed through the subsoil medium by means of electrodes. So, electrode will be metal strips kind of things or rods which you will push directly into the ground and through these rods you will actually uh, try to complete your circuit because once the circuit is complete there will be flow of current from one electrode generally towards the other electrode depending upon which side you have cathode, which side you have anode and uh, so the electrode will be connected to a battery or any other power source. Now, this is about external loading, this is very much similar to if, if, we, we, if we compare this with the seismic method, this is very much similar to shock waves. So, there you are generating shock wave, here you are generating or you are inducing some kind of current uh, into the soil. So, uh, how you quantify the soil uh, properties? 
you will again measure here in the previous one you are measuring the resistance of our two shock wave here you are interested to find out or quantify the material type based on the resistance offered by the subsurface medium against above applied current. So, here you will be interested to find out depending upon see different material will be there depending upon the mineral composition of the material depending upon the porosity of the material depending upon so many properties maybe one material is offering more resistance in comparison to the other material. So, if you know some way how much is the resistance offered by the material at different different depth, depth also you will get an idea depending upon how much is the spread is there, uh, 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 what is the geometry of your setup at the site of interest that is going to give you an idea about probably what is the depth of exploration. So, if you know the depth of exploration, if you know the resistance this will help you to identify the thickness of the layer as well as the type of the soil which is available in that particular thickness. So, this is measured. So, the resistance is measured by means of potential drop. So, in order to measure potential drop again there will be potential electrode which will be kept at known distance from the current electrode by means of ok. So, there will be potential drop why potential drop will be there because the soil which is available between the source of current and the source where you are actually recording the potential there will be always a drop because the resistance offered by the material and what is the material? Material is the medium or the soil which is available between the current electrode and the potential electrode. So, depending upon how much is the resistance we will be offering. Now, method util utilizes the difference in electrical resistivity or the resistance offered we call it as apparent resistance because depending upon the electrode spacing between current and uh, potential every time your electrode will be showing potential drop because of some geometry or some uh, uh, yeah some geometry of the field setup. So, every time it is going to give you it keeps on changing if you change the spacing between the electrodes it is going to give you a new value so, because it is not fixed value we call it as apparent resistance or apparent uh, 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 resistivity of the medium. So, this method utilizes the difference in the differences in the electrical resistivity. So, one material might be offering more resistance, another might be offering less resistance. Once you complete your set, your setup, you will be able to understand with respect to the electrode spacing how much is the resistance offered by the material. If you are able to interpret the, the, the uh, spacing between the electrode with respect to the depth, that will also give you an indication just like your SPTN value, just like your uh, shear wave velocity or primary wave velocity with respect to depth it will be like with respect to the depth how much is the variation with respect to in terms of uh, apparent resistivity of the medium. Now, if apparent resistivity or, or, or the resistance offered by the material against electric current is, uh, is not a fixed thing rather it is a function of stratification, how many number of layers, thickness of layer, what are the characteristics of those layers. Mineralogy, what are the mineral composition? One mineral may be a good conductor, another mineral may be relatively lesser conductor of electricity or accordingly if it is better conductor, it, uh, the resistance offered will be lesser and so on and so forth. Then porosity of the medium, more porous is the medium, more resistance it will offer. Degree of saturation with respect to uh, whether the soil is dry, it is partially saturated, it is completely saturated, the resistance offered by the material will vary accordingly considering uh, uh, the material which is available in the pore spaces, it is a good conductor or bad conductor of electricity. Uh, uh, so, accordingly uh, whether it is dry condition or wet condition or saturated condition, you will get an idea about whether the resistance offered by the soil will be more less or it will not be there. Moisture content decreases, so the resistance decreases with increase in moisture content because considering the uh, water is a good conductor of electricity. So, more uh, is the quantity of water present in the soil or more moist in the soil less will be the resistance offered. Then chemical characteristics that is what I was mentioning point number 3 or uh, 4 also degree of saturation like chemical characteristics of the pore fluid. If the pore fluid itself is offering more resistance then if you keep on increasing the, uh, uh, the percentage of pore fluid in the pores the resistance will keep on increasing. On the other hand, if the pore fluid is good conductor of electricity, then depending upon its quantity uh, in the pore spaces, the resistance offered will be accordingly changing. Then temperature, medium density, 
medium density will also uh, get an idea like how much is the continuity in the material, material characteristics or material properties. Then pore sizes and shape depending upon how much is the pore size, larger is the pore size you may get you, uh, the soil may offer more resistance and similarly about the pore spaces, larger is the density of pore spaces more will be the resistance offered because there will be the medium discontinuity will be there. Then present of buried structure, it might be possible at your uh, site of interest like you are having one kind of soil layer, but within that soil layer you might find some buried pipeline. Now what will happen depending upon the material of the pipeline if it is PVC pipe it will not offer any um, I mean it will offer some resistance or it may not offer, not offer. If it is metal pipeline it may reduce the resistance offered. So accordingly the presence of buried structure which are generally like pipelines at times you may find some buried uh, 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 portions of uh, tracks or, or rails. Uh, uh, from particularly from railway line even you can get some buried cables also. So, buried cables also what uh, overall it is like depending upon what kind of medium you can call it as in a foreign material which is actually inducing some kind of either more resistance or less resistance in comparison to the general tendency of the ground because of which the resistance offered by the material will change, it may increase, it may decrease depending upon what material it is composed of, what is the characteristics in its in situ condition and so on and so forth. Then the last one is topography of the medium, topography of the medium will also determine the resistance offered by the material because depending upon the topography you may see more undulation, you may see lesser undulation of material which is able to uh, offer more resistance or less resistance. Now, uh, I, I have been talking about uh, the fact that the material of a resistance which will be quantified in terms of resistance offered per meter, uh, I mean resistance offered uh, in, in terms of ohm meter. So, ohm is uh, the unit of uh, 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 resistance and then resistivity we, we measure in ohm meter. So, you can get from this uh, table if you are able to uh, uh, quantify the apparent resistivity of the medium that will give you some idea about what kind of soil is there. So, if you are uh, talking about uh, resistivity of the order of 1 to 20 clay soil will be there 20 to 200 this has been given as per US Corps of Engineers in the year 1979. Then shell is there, then porous limestone is there, then dense limestone is there. So, you can get an idea depending upon the medium it may offer more resistance, it may offer less resistance. And since at your field uh, uh, you are interested to record this resistance, so once you know these values, depending upon the range of the values, you will be able to find out or you will be able to back interpret what kind of medium is available at the site of the interest again below the ground surface. Now, this was about uh, if you know the uh, resistance offered by the material at different different depth, but what is happening at the site of the interest, we are, we are interested to know that. So, uh, let me uh, draw one very clear example here like what is happening what we are interested to basics of the method. So, I am telling here like this is your ground level or um, uh, ground surface, this is your soil I can call it as soil layer 1 soil layer 2, each of these soil is offering some kind of resistance, I am calling it as apparent resistance. So, in order to uh, against current, so first of all we have to put some way in which we can uh, be able to determine the current here, it should be slightly lesser because we are targeting for. So, in comparison to the uh, thickness of the layer. I am calling these are the current electrodes which are connected to some battery
yeah we we have to uh, put some ammeter also here which is able to measure your current so because this circuit is complete but how this circuit will be complete or how will be the flow of current that will be in terms of you can get an idea about in terms of so just like your uh, if you remember in in uh, case of c spring method we we discussed like this is a source because of which there will be wave front which is indicating the direction of propagation of wave so again this is like telling the direction of flow of current this this will be called as equipotential line joining the point of same equipotential which are generally confocal hyperbola now perpendicular to these lines will be it should be 90 degree here everywhere then same way it will be like this same thing is happening here also so you will be having current electrode because of which there will be equipotential lines here so these all are called as equipotential lines as a result of which this there will be again perpendicular to this equipotential lines so the first one was called as equipotential line and again these are also at 90 degree these lines are called as these lines are called as current lines perpendicular to equipotential line and are confocal ellipses now you see here these lines the current line are showing the direction in which the current is there is a flow of current and then you have equipotential line which are general, which are the lines joining the points of same equipotential or same potential drop so if i consider here like equipotential line may be uh, like 1 2 3 4 5 if i consider here so number 1 equipotential line is penetrating or is joining the points first of all it is closer to the source from which the current started flowing moreover it is so with respect to the current electrode it is very closer so because uh, the current is able to flow through a limited distance definitely the resistance offered till uh, equipotential line 1 will be relatively lesser in comparison to the current or resistance of our till potential line 2 3 and so on and so forth this is one thing second thing if you see the equipotential line 1 is passing through shallower medium i can write here also 1 is passing through shallower medium so two comparisons are there one is with respect to the depth second with respect to the electrode or current electrode how far are these each equipotential line so because it is passing through shallower medium again so very much similar to the distance between the current electrode and the equipotential line it is increasing as you are going away from the electrode second is with respect to the current electrode again if you are going i mean if you are going to uh, equipotential line 1 2 3 4 it is coming from more it is joining the points from deeper medium like equipotential line which is the fifth one it is it is passing through the all uh, it is joining the points 
showing equal potential drop along this depth, along this length. So definitely the resistance offered along equal potential line 5 will be significantly more than in comparison to 1, first because the distance between the potential, uh, potential line and uh, current electrode is less. Second thing, based on the distance or, or the depth from which the equipotential line is coming, as, as it is going deeper and deeper, it is definitely connecting the points which have more resistance, uh, I mean it is joining the points corresponding to more resistance or more potential drop. So, if I put, uh, so this is going to give you an indication, if I put one uh, potential electrode may be at 1, if I put potential electrode, potential electrode at 1, what it is going to give you? It is going to give me some indication about resistance offered in the medium not in the, by the medium corresponding to one equipotential line, one equipotential line. Same way, if I go for equipotential line 5, as coming from deeper depth, deeper depth covers more material or which has offered more resistance, more is the material through which the current is passing, more will be the uh, 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 resistance offered more resistance offered. Uh, for understanding probably you, we can consider just one layer rather than layer 1 and 2, so we will, I am just removing this. So it is considered like entire region is like homogeneous layer, because unlike your seismic reflection survey, in this case if the resistivity decreases also with the depth, this method will work. Only thing your field record will give you accordingly what kind of interpretation, what kind of field plot will be there between resistance or resistivity and the um, uh, distance. Okay. So, this is like homogeneous soil. So, that means throughout the depth I am considering same type of soil is there. So, resistance offered by the material number 1 will be re relatively less comparison to the material number 2 and so on and so forth. Now, if I put a, um, uh, so in order to find out how much is the re uh, resistance offered by the material. I can be able to determine this. So, rho the resistivity is equals to R A L. So, L is the distance between current electrodes R is resistance offered and A is cross sectional area. So, this is like overall, so if you keep on increasing the distance between the electrodes, so if I put some potential electrode here and same way another potential electrode at equal distance from here, okay, it should be so, this one and this one are called as potential electrodes. It is going to give you an idea about how much is the potential drop. So, again this will be connected to a voltmeter which is going to give you an idea about how much is the potential drop between uh, this this current lines and between the equipotential uh, 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 potential electrode. So that's how if if so I give you an example about homogeneous soil because homogeneous soil is there. So uh, you are considering the resistance offered is uh, uh, same throughout the depth. 
but if you keep on increasing more number of layers which I had given earlier, so as, as the uh, your equipotential line is penetrating deeper depth and if you are putting your potential electrode at an equipotential line which is generating far off from the source that is if you are keep on if you keep on increasing the distance between your current electrode and your uh, potential electrode you are actually targeting for deeper depth. So, in case the deeper depth is showing some kind of increase in the resistance or decrease in the resistance you will be you will be able to capture that. So, in order to get more more uh, precise idea about how the resistivity is increasing with respect to the depth what we do we keep on shifting your current electrode sometime your potential electrode also sometime both the electrodes. So, that is going to give you an idea about how, how with respect to the spacing of the electrode which is directly proportional to the um, uh, depth of exploration the resistivity is changing. Now, uh, I am going to give you an idea about how, how this is going to work for a case of a two layered system. So, in order to give you an idea about two layered system like I have put some So, I, as I told here I will put some uh, current electrode, potential electrode and this is current electrode. keep on changing the distance between the electrodes what you will be able to get here like if it is coming first one is layer number 1 which is like this layer number 2. So, the equipotential line which is passing which is uh, coming from here I can tell it is like position 1 of potential electrode electrode such that it is able to record or it is able to detect the potential uh, equipotential line which is penetrating only this particular depth that is soil layer 1. Then you put receiver 2 position 2 such that because it is away from the source there is higher chances you may get you will be able to record um, uh, equipotential line or potential drop from uh, because of the medium which is available. So, here you can see you are having some portion in soil layer 1 and some portion from soil layer 2. Now, it is going to give me an idea uh, like on an average what is the potential drop at position number 2. In between also if you keep on uh, taking like uh, if you if you gently uh, keep on shifting your potential electrode you will be able to get. So, if I put here electrode spacing and this one is resistivity. So, depending upon uh, your uh, uh, measurement. So, like suppose you put some electrodes because of which you found some electro resistivity then same way and then you see some gradual change something like this. So, I am just showing you an indication like with each change in the spacing between the electrode corresponding to this if you are measuring the resistivity. So, considering first electrode which is going to give the resistivity offered uh, resistivity or resistance offered by the material only in shallower depth. So, till that time your equipotential line uh, you are, uh, is coming from layer number 1 you are going to get almost similar value which is corresponding to rho of 1 that is resist resistivity of layer 1. Now, what will happen after this? It is gradually changing. Why it is changing? Because now your electrode spacing is uh, electrode spacing is such that your potential electrode is far distance from the source or from the current electrode such that 
it is able to detect the equipotential line which is dominating or the characteristic of equipotential line or the potential drop is dominated by second layer but still there are a significant portion of equipotential line which is coming from first layer. So, this is some kind of transition you can call it as transition in resistivity between layer 1 and layer 2. So, because in layer 2 like as you again uh, if you if I put another receiver may be here 0.3 if I put as position 3 what will happen the potential line which you are targeting here it will be coming from further deeper depth or maybe like uh, it should come this way something like this. So, that you can get like this portion is dominated by layer 2 in comparison to layer 1. So, sooner there will be a stage like there is a transition sooner with respect to the electrode spacing increase the resistance offered by the material is clearly giving an indication like majority of the content you are getting from layer number 2. So, this you can call it as row 2 this is row 1 resistance offered resistivity of layer 2. Same way you can get an idea about uh, subsequent layer again there will be if the resistivity is increasing with the depth you can again see some kind of increase like this if it is decreasing you can get an idea about this decrease this is like increase this is like decrease and if it is homogeneous then it will remain more or less constant value. One important observation which I would like to mention here is the resistivity what you are measuring here is the apparent resistivity. Why? Because depending upon the position of the electrode uh, potential electrode it is um, uh, able to detect or it is able to record the potential drop which is at that particular position. So, if you if you shift it may be slightly further or slightly before that particular position it may it may give you some slightly different value because it is not giving, going to give you the value of a particular layer it is going to give you the value on an average resistance offered by the equipotential line which is for passing through that particular location of the electrode. So, that that is uh, more important that is why we call it as rho A that is apparent resistance I am calling it as rho A here apparent resistance offered or apparent resistivity by layer 1 or layer 2. So, that is how uh, so based on this field record so every time you go to the site you install your um, current electrode you install your potential electrode and then pass the current and try to find out how much is the potential drop between your current electrode and potential electrode and based on that you will be able to detect how much is the uh, I mean how much is the uh, apparent resistivity with respect to the spacing and this this way you will be able to understand what is the value and again this is going to give you how much is the uh, overall uh, what is the thickness of different layers also you can get an idea. So, one important note to be mentioned here is the test provides variation in soil resistivity with respect to depth. The depth of interpretation depends upon the spacing between the electrodes as I mentioned here. So, keep on increasing the spacing you, your, your equipotential line will be showing you uh, overall resistance offered by the material even I mean from large volume of material. So, to give you an example in case if the spacing between the electrodes are is 1.35 meter you, your, your test will yield information up to 1.5 meter 1.35 meter depth uh, with respect to the ground surface. So, if you are interested to go for maybe 200 meter 
you put your electrodes at 200 meter distance and uh, you will be able to determine how much is the variation in the electrical resistivity. So, so first of all you put your current electrode and uh, potential electrode nearer and then keep on increasing the distance between the electrodes so that you will be able to determine uh, how the resistivity is varying with respect to the depth. So, typical field record as I mentioned earlier also, so depending upon the dimension, depending upon the subsoil properties. So, if I put it here, there can be, so I am uh, writing here and this is electrode spacing. Okay. So, if the soil is homogeneous as I mentioned earlier, because the soil is homogeneous we uh, uh, that means the soil is not offering any change in the resistivity or resistivity offered by the material is more or less constant. I am calling it as 1. So, 1 is representing homogeneous soil no change in the characteristics with respect to the depth. Second you can consider if the resistivity is increasing with respect to the depth B should be uh, like this. So, B is the graph B A is indicating the resistivity is constant that is homogeneous soil B is indicating resistivity like low resistivity layer. layer overlaying higher resistivity layer so initially you were having low resistivity and then higher resistivity that's why you can see there is an in, 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 increase in the resistivity with respect to the spacing or with respect to the depth then same way you can have Another thing like this C, so C is giving you indication about higher resistivity layer overlaying a low resistivity layer. So, you have higher resistivity layer, you have low resistivity layer. So, as I mentioned earlier also this is not like uh, where with respect to depth if resistivity is increasing you cannot use this method. You can use it in between also if the resistivity is showing some increase and then decrease. So, it will be like this again I am calling it as graph D. So, D you call it as high resistance high resistivity layer between two lower resistivity layers. So, if you see here you have low resistivity here you are having lower resistivity here but in between there is increase in the resistivity that is why you are calling it as high resistivity layer is presenting in between two lower resistivity layer. And same way if you are having some kind of discontinuity and all that you can get something like this E which I am calling it as uh, presence of presence of vertical discontinuity in between in between higher resistivity layers so 
So that's why you are you are able to see some increases there, but suddenly there is a drop. So that is because of vertical discontinuity. So more or less, um, um, uh, whenever you are going for a field investigation, you precisely get any of these kinds of uh, 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 graphs or a combination of these graphs, depending upon how it is increasing, decreasing, so on and so forth. Now, widely followed, I mentioned here like some spacing between the electrodes, current electrode and so on and so forth. So, based on uh, people expertise, people experience, uh, widely followed there are three configuration of uh, um, geophone, uh, 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 current electrodes and potential electrode which are like. So, first one is called as Schlumberger array, array. I am going to give you like what is the uh, field setup here. So, this is your ground level, then you are having your current electrodes here, then you are having so this is I emitter, this is again current electrode. And then you are having potential electrodes here, which are generally porous cups and then you are having some measurement of potential drop here, V, so I am calling this as potential electrodes. So, configuration which is suggested here is the spacing between the center line of your spread, if this is S and the spacing between your potential electrodes, this is A. So, this configuration gives that is Schlumberger array configuration gives better results in case of twice S is greater than equal to 5 times A. Now, how you get the resistivity here? Rho A will be equals to pi S square V over A i. So, the value of S A is given here, V is voltage, I is current, and rho A is apparent resistivity which is measured by this method that is Schlumberger array. Then same way we can go for another array which is called as Wenner array. So, in Wenner array the configuration is like So, this is your equipotential potential electrodes, and this one and this one are your current electrodes. Now, the spacing, if you see here. all will be A, that is the spacing between current electrode, potential electrode is equal to the spacing between potential electrodes. So, in this case, the distance between current electrodes should be 3 times the distance between potential electrodes. 
Now again in this case you will be having the value of apparent resistance given as 2 pi A over V over I. So, A value is given here, voltage V is again voltage, I is current, rho A is apparent velocity uh, resistance. Okay. So, same way the third one is also there which is called as Lee array though not uh, very uh, widely covered. So, this is A. So, in between also so this is like V R, this is like V L, and this is like A. This is like A by 2, A by 2 and this one. So, this is called as Lee array, the value of rho A longitudinal will be 4 pi A V L over I and rho A R 4 pi A V R over I. So, V R and V L are voltage and uh, I is current and rho A L and rho A R are apparent resistance resistivity. So, generally any of these like first two more are more common as far as uh, the area um, uh, to be tested as well as um, these are current electrodes. This one also current electrode and these are potential electrodes. So, this, this is more common as far as we go for the first one the Schlumberger area and Banner area are more common when we go for field investigation. So, the characteristic of different configuration in case of Vener array all the four electrodes are moved at every time as I told like whenever we are interested to go for deep uh, uh, deeper medium exploration we have to increase the distance between the electrodes. So, in case of Vener array we increase the distance between all the electrodes at the same time. So, that is why it requires longer length of the cables and because uh, uh, at the later stage of the investigation it might be possible the electrodes are too, up, too much uh, far from each other. So, you require at least individually one one uh, manpower with respect to each uh, electrode whenever some shifting is required they can done it they can do it easily. Another thing is in case of dry or frozen soil significant time is required. So, that the proper contact between the electrode as well as the surrounding soil should be established. Otherwise, if it is not there then the resistance offered will be shown more than in comparison to the um, um, actual resistance offered by the soil. Then in case of Schlumberger array, only outer electrode that is current electrodes are moved in the range of 4 to 5 times the inner electrode spacing. It reduces the requirement for lateral space and then because only 2 electrodes are required to be moved then it is in comparison to Vener error it is uh, at times um, um, economical. Now, I have been discussing uh, 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 basics about why and how the electrical resistivity survey works, how it is going to give you deeper layer information and uh, in, in terms of apparent resistivity then why it is called as apparent resistivity. So, all these things we have discussed in today's class. 
now look at the advantage and disadvantages or limitation of electrical resistivity test. So, the setup advantages are as follows, setup is light, so it's, it does not, it is not very bulky or it is not a very uh, 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 large volume contained um, uh, setup, it is light, it is portable and economical, qualitative interpretation is easy and uh, rapid. Uh, rapid. So, directly you are getting uh, in terms of apparent resistance from the field records, you get it easily and interpretation is also easy because you are getting uh, other than the transition you are getting directly an indication about how much is the resistance offered by the soil layer. Other expenses are minimal other than field setup, there is no additional requirement because battery, cables, everything is there in the setup itself. It is again non-destructive in nature, only thing you, you require hardly maybe some dimension, minimal dimension is required so that you can uh, put your uh, electrodes into the ground. So, it is non-destructive more or less, very thin electrodes are there maybe I mean of uh, uh, particular uh, length and then shallow investigations are rapid. Then limitations for deeper exploration, of course, you are interested to go for uh, to understand the apparent resistance offered by the deeper layers. So, in order to make to, to, to measure that you have to ensure like your equipotential line should be should contain more uh, 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 potential drop from the deeper layers. So, in order to um, ensure that you have to put your uh, spacing between the electrodes will be very large or the later spread will be equally larger. To give uh, that is why I had given an example like 1.35 meter depth exploration you require at least 1.35 meter spread. So, same way if you are going for 200 meter or maybe 500 kilometer, uh, 500 meter uh, exploration almost equal amount of that is required. Another challenge which comes into uh, uh, field in investigation here because you are targeting for uh, 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 maybe 500 meter exploration sometime topography also is a big challenge because it is at times it is it is possible like within 500 meter stretch the topography itself is changing you are not getting any kind of sample here. Presence of metal pipes, cables add more complexity. So, you are interested to find out resistance offered by the material uh, uh, soil layers, but if there are metal pipes, cables that will offer either more resistance or less resistance depending upon the material, material characteristics, but it will add more complexity to your interpretation part. Same way is if you have complex geology, it will add more and more complexity to your interpretation of the results. So, I hope uh, today's lecture uh, you you, uh, uh, you will be able to understand like what is uh, the basic of electrical resistivity survey, what is the objective here whenever we go for electrical resistivity survey, how the method works, how it is possible and why it is possible to interpret deeper layers with respect to the change in spacing particularly when you are going for heterogeneous soil layers or stratification in the soil layers and why it is not happening in case of homogeneous soil layer that a variation in the resistivity uh, uh, you are able to get from field recording. So, this is all for electrical resistivity survey, thank you all.